Please help us share if you don't mind. If you are comfortable with that, please help us share. And please invite your friends. Dickiness Lolo, thank you for joining. I can see you right there. Thank you for joining. If you don't mind, please help us share this broadcast. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, I'm also ready to learn today. I'm bringing my mama on shortly. I'm ready to learn. She's somebody I love to listen to so much. She's full of wisdom. She's full of the spirit of God. She's somebody I can sit and listen to her all day, all night. So I'm super excited also today because see, my pen is right here. I can't wait to hear more from her today. And I believe it's not going to be a waste of time for you too. If you are looking into raising your children in godly way, this is the place. Just stay tuned. Don't go anywhere and don't touch the dial. It's going to be awesome. Esther, I can see you there. Mr. Shuku Godwin, thank you for joining, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Mrs. Pascal, I already see you there. Thank you so much for joining. All right, I'm just going to be bringing the guest. I'm going to be bringing Mommy Pat shortly because I don't want to do the introduction while she's not here. I think we can get started. All right, thank you, everybody. Please share, share, share for us. Invite your friends. Somebody's right there, but I can't see the person. All right, just type hello, hi, as you call me. Thank you, everybody. You know this little girl loves you so much. Thank you for your support, as always. I really appreciate it. I'm not taking this for granted. Thank you. Ah, Miss Johanna, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. God bless you. I can see you right there. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. All right, I'm going to be bringing in the guests shortly. Mommy Pat, if you are there, you can just send me an invite. All right, let's get started. I am super excited. I just want to hear from her. It's going to be awesome. Don't forget today's topic, the, our topic of discussion. Pastor Rachel, thank you, mommy, for coming back today. I can see you right there. Thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to support this little girl. All right, I'm just going to be bringing the guest right in right now. Thank you. Please don't forget, as we are going to be starting as we're going to continue the discussion you can always send in your questions the whole purpose of having this platform is to share our our worries our concerns and to see how we can help each other to bring about solutions so if we are discussing something and you have question about it or you have a burning question in your heart just go ahead send us your question if you're not comfortable sharing your question on the comment section go ahead and inbox us or you send into our email at the vision guide at gmail.com we have assess it immediately and get back to you there you go mommy is there that is mommy fat oluro timi i'm super excited to see mommy right there this morning you know she's one mother that i only like okay when she's there I, I, i'm not worried anytime i'm privileged to have a program in church and she's right seated there if i'm saying something on the podium you know i just ask she's there thank god I can hang on to her grace and I can just go ahead and talk, 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 talk. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mommy Pat Oluro Timi. We are so glad to have you on the Vision Guide, this special edition of Parenting Essentials. And thank you to Daddy for allowing you to be part of this program. We are not taking it for granted. I say thank you on behalf of everyone from the Vision Guide. And God bless you. All right, I'm just going to be doing introduction. I don't want her to say a word yet. Just stare at her. She's so beautiful, amazing, gorgeous. That's my mama. When I tell you I choose the right mama, you believe me. Don't worry, you find out soon. Just stay there. I choose the right mamas. I don't just choose mamas. I choose them. They are full of wisdom. They are full of God's anointing, God's grace, impactful. You'll find out soon. All right, Mr. Pra uh, uh, Dickin Prashant, I can see you right there. Oh, Dickin S. Needy, thank you for joining. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Please, if you don't mind, please help us share this broadcast and please help us invite people. Help us invite people so that we can all be blessed together. We don't want to be selfish. We want everybody to be part of this blessing because it's going to be amazing. All right, without further ado, I'm just going to be introducing Mommy Pat, you know. I've known Mommy Pat for almost a decade, I'm sure, I think so, for almost a decade. And during the time of our waiting, she was one of the people, I think the only person in Doha that believed for multiple for me, because she always called me Mama Beta, which means Mommy of Three. Mommy of Three, I was like, huh, Mommy, I was believing God for two, you also believing God for three, oh my God. She kept calling me Mommy of Three, Mommy of Three, Mommy of Three, by faith, you know, she, she, 
she's the kind of person that believed God with you. She stood in gap, even though I didn't ask her, because I know she was always praying for me. And until those things came through, you know, I was like, oh, amazing. For years, she kept calling me Mama Better because she knew God was going to do it anyways. So I've known her way back. Mrs. Shomade, thank you for joining. I can see you right there. I can see you. I'm glad you are here. Thank you for joining. Please, as you join in, please drop comment. I just want to say hello to you also as you join in. And if you don't mind, please help us share this broadcast so that as many people as possible can also be a part of today's blessings. Don't forget today's topic is raising godly children. So if you are a believer of God, this particular episode of Parenting Essentials is dedicated to believers of God. It's not uh, the educational aspect of it, but today we are going spiritual. We are going spiritual. That's why I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to be offended. So the, today's section is spiritual, highly spiritual. So we are talking about raising godly children. So if you don't mind, please help us share and invite your friends and family. As I was saying about Mommy Pat Olurotimi, Mommy Pat Olurotimi is an associate pastor of Full Gospel Sanctuary and the wife of the senior pastor of the Full Gospel Sanctuary, Doha, Qatar. She's a great mom of two wonderful children, a passion for the work of Christ, for the body of Christ, for the labor, for labor of love is amazing. It cannot be overemphasized. If I start, I, in fact, I sat and I'm like, what am I going to write about mommy? I said, I just, just keep it simple because there is no word that I can use to describe a passion for the things of God. And today I'm glad that she's here with me on this uh, special edition of Parenting Essential. Mommy Pat, you are welcome. You can go ahead and say hi to everybody. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want Hallelujah. to appreciate God for this opportunity and this privilege. I'm not taking it for granted. I'm not taking it for granted. No, as a child of God, you give your best to God. You give your best to God. If somebody is praising you that you are devoted, you are committed to God, you cannot do less. Praise God. You cannot do less. But that is what God is expecting from you. If God can give all for you, you should be ready to give all for God. Like she has said, I have two kids. No, I'm a missionary in Doha. We were posted almost 10 years ago from Nigeria to start the ministry you know, back in Doha. Our senior pastor is in Nigeria, Pastor Andrew Fodorisho and Mommy Go. So we are here to represent them and we appreciate God for God's faithfulness over the years. And I'm very, very confident this afternoon that you are going to be blessed. You will not regret over your children in the name yeah. of Jesus. So we get the boy, no? Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for mommy, mommy for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank God. you. Thank you. God bless you. I can see Miss, uh, maybe Miss or Mrs. Bumi Imorio. Please, if I mother your name, forgive me. Thank you for joining today. I just want to say hello to as much people as I can see. That's why I said just try to drop hello and I. And if you don't mind, please let us know where exactly you're joining us from. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I can see you, Lori. Laugh in Niyi. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Celeb wife, God bless you, God bless you. All right, mommy, let's just get started. As we all know, and in case you don't know that, today's topic is about raising godly children, raising godly children. So mommy, I just want you to just start with uh, telling us about um, uh, your picture of raising godly children and how you've been able, because I know your kids are wonderful and they're godly, and how you've been able to raise godly children. Just go ahead, mom. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, I, I would like to start this topic, no, by actually making our viewers to know when we say godly parenting, godly parenting does not just happen by accident. <laughs> it doesn't happen by, by accident, no. No, if you are a mother, if you are a father, if you are a parent, and you want to raise godly children, it should be your vision. Praise God. You must have it as a vision. You must have it as a purpose. No, it is what you must be intentional about. It is what you are dreaming of. If you want to raise a godly child, so you start from that foundation. And the foundation is <laughs> what you don't have, you cannot give. So both of you actually must be born again. When you are children of God, then the vision starts. The vision starts. 
you know, because some of us, our background was not, not that superb. Our background was not okay when it comes to, you know, being godly. Hallelujah. Like I'm talking to you now, my, my background was not, maybe my mother is a pastor or my father is a pastor or they were born again, so to say. It wasn't like that. But when I come into the picture, when I became born again, and I look at my environment, I look at the home that I'm coming from, you know, there was that clarity that, no, I must not run my home this way. My children must not actually be raised this way. There must be something I must do extra so that all these things I'm seeing around me do not know manifest in my own home. So actually raising godly children is a vision. It's something, something before you have something will propel you, something you have that thing in you that say, oh no, dear, I don't want this kind of things for my children. I don't want my children to see things like this. So it's a vision. It's a purpose. It's what you, you, you have to just determine. No, to do as parents, it's not by accident. You must have the vision. I'm going to start from there. And like I said, I didn't come from a pastor's home or my parents were that born again. But something, when I became born again, hallelujah, when I became born again, even maybe secondary school, secondary school, but as a teenager, you give your life to Christ, you take it back, you give your life to Christ. But when I got to higher institution, you understand when I was I now got to and now I was now born again. And now when I was now recollecting my background, where I came from, I proposed that time that my home, my marriage, my husband, my children, they must just be exceptional children. My home must be an exceptional home. So when we are talking about raising godly children, we are saying we are raising children that fear God. Children that have excellent characters, you know, for the church of God, for you and the community as a whole. Children that you can boast of. You know, so we say celebrity, celebrity children. I'm not talking about celebrity children. It's not about being a celebrity children, but God-fearing children. What is, when you're raising celebrity children, when they don't have the fear of God, what is the, no, that is not about celebrity now, but having the fear of God, having the character of God, I know imparting God, know the will of God into your children. That is raising godly children, excellent children. No, we have the example in the Bible like Daniel. They say, children in who were found excellent spirits. In every aspect, they were on top. They are unique. So it takes vision, it takes purpose and determination. It just don't happen by accident. You don't, don't no, you give your time to it. You give your time to it. So that's why I say marriage is a school on its own. And that is the course you come, you know, when you come to marriage, that is the course you start to learn. You start putting your attention to when you get married. How will my family be? What do you want to, what do what do I want to bring out from this marriage? What do I want to bring out from my husband and my children? That is the vision. Because your home, people are looking at your home, praise God. They are looking at you, they are looking at your home, and the seed that comes from that home. That's what I'm going to say for now. All right. Thank you so much for the starting. I am really, I'm getting blessed already. I don't know about you. I want to believe everyone who is here is also getting blessed. You know, you like, you just rush out, like take it, take it in. And I'm just sucking it in. And if there's something I would like to underline in what she had just said is being intentional. You know, most of my video, I talk about intentionality. Parenting itself must be intentional. Not to talk about being, uh, raising godly children. She said something, and I head on to it. She said, it's not automatic. You can't just wake up today and say, I want to raise godly children. I have a question here I'm going to read out. And please don't forget, you can drop your question as you come in. Maybe you are having a challenge in raising your children in godly way, or she, said, she has said something, we're going to say something that you're not very clear about. You are free to drop your comments at the comment section here, or you DM us, or you send it into our email, and we are going to get back to you as soon as we can on that. She, please, on the line, if it's possible, you know, get a pen and get a book, because you are going to be highly blessed today. She said, it's not automatic. It must be intentional. And I'm going to ask her to give us some ways you've been able to raise your children. What are the things? Do you just wake up and say, you have to be godly. You have to be godly. How did you go about it? And I know that basically uh, your children, they are growing in this part. They grew up in this part of the world. And back then, I know there is no like Friday school. But it's not, it's not like the way it is now. So what are the things you did personally to help them to grow spiritually? And before you get started on that, I have a question that I'm, I think is in line with what you're saying. Okay. 
Somebody said, he said, I see your children speaking in tongues. Like, that's the question is to me. I see your children speaking in tongues. So I want you to answer this question, why you also deal with other things. I think he's going to make it as a, uh, ah, Okay. Delali, thank you for joining. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad you made it out. Thank you. I was thinking it's going to be night in your side. You're going to watch later. So I'm so glad to see you. Thank you. Mrs. Johnson, thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing, everybody. God bless you. Yes, yes, yes. It's a needy. Yes, it must be intentional. It must be intentional. So as I was saying, I'm going to read this question out. And she's going to pick it up with the question I'm asking her right now. Please, if you are there, if I have not mentioned your name, please just say hello or I. And if you don't mind, please let us know where you are joining us from, especially if you are not joining from Doha, Qatar. Let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, very good. Let us know where you're joining us from. God bless you. So somebody said, said, I see your children speaking in tongues and praying. How does that work? I barely cannot pray for five minutes. How can I help my child? <laughs> so somebody sees my children speaking in tongues and praying and asking, how does that work? Mommy, I want you to treat this question with the other ones. Why, why teaching us how you were able to raise your own children in the way of the Lord? Say, uh, she's the person is asking, how does that work? I cannot barely pray for five minutes. <laughs> you know, go ahead, mommy. God bless you. Mrs. Praise Quaker, God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for joining. From Dallas, yes, Texas. God bless yes. you. We appreciate you. Go ahead, mommy. Yeah, like I said, you have a vision about your home. You know that this home belongs to God. That the, the, the foundation of your home is God. When the foundation of your home is God, that means everything that happens in that home must be in line with God's will. And as children of God, we fellowship with God. Now, do you know one thing? If husband and wife cannot come together to pray when children has not come. No, you as a man calling your wife and you guys having fellowship, no having altar, praying together, you sitting down. You don't say because it's only your wife and only your wife. You cannot sit down, let's share the Bible together. Do you know that when children come, it will be very, very difficult. Whatever you are not used to, whatever you are not used to before your children come, doing this will be challenging when your children comes. Like in our home, we know we are even we are not. Let's let's be that side of being pastor aside. Even when we are not pastors, we know we are children of God, and we know what we are to do as children of God to have fellowship with God. Normally, you no, know, your quiet time, your prayer time, your family altar, reading the Word of God, that is already established in our home. It was already established in my home. So when my children comes, they flow into that environment when I have them. They flow into that environment. You know, that environment has already been established. You must not be too busy. You must not be too busy. No matter how, whether it, it can be in the morning, it can be in the night, make sure there is a fellowship in your home. Make sure you raise altar for God in your home. So when my children come, like you said, we raise them in Nigeria. We have, you no, know, like my praise is started, you no. Know, the children's school right from Nigeria, it goes. But when we came here, I discovered no, no children, uh, no, no, no children, no children to relate with, nothing to relate with. So we we'll make sure in my home, we we'll make sure in my, it is what we we'll make sure that we establish that we and our children, we have devotion. We have devotion. We might not have time in the morning, but in the evening, there must be devotion. We pray. And it's not 15 minutes prayer. Uh -uh. They are used to praying long time. At Tell least them, one mommy. hour. Vigil. Yes. At yeah. least one hour. Not 15 minutes. Not at least one hour. Before we go to bed. We make sure. So from there, from there, we see that, okay, this day you understand, you know, what this family is all about. We, are, we don't have, and you know one thing. We need to emphasize to our children, we don't have any other helper apart from God. We sink it into their, no, into their consciousness that we do in this, that in this country that we are in, it's only God that we have. So anywhere we go to, we carry them along. If, it, if anybody knows us in this country where we started, you cannot invite us now to anywhere and we leave our children behind. 
would take them along any any engagements wherever we're spiritually. Our children will always be in that environment. We don't even that even when we started our church, I was not sitting at the altar with my children, with my with my husband. I will sit at the back with my children so that I'll be able to monitor them to be calm. Not that no, as the mother, you leave your children wandering about, you know. No. I was sitting mommy, on the back. Mommy, I was sorry, to, my husband. sorry to cut you short, mommy. Uh, I don't want to forget yeah. this. With, because of what you're saying at the moment, make me remember something that I want to say, and I want you to expand shade on it, because I feel a lot of people don't okay. get that part straight. Because uh, okay. they have passion for God, they are working for God. Yes. And I think what you're saying yes. is a good example. You will leave daddy in front to sit alone, and you sit at the back. Yeah. So I yes. think a lot of people think I overdo things in that aspect. Like, okay, you are, you know, I, I want you to explain the aspect of uh, prioritizing the work of God. Which one comes first? Because I've seen a lot of parents. I've seen a lot of parents, they say, no, we cannot, we want to work for God. And the children ended up suffering. It's a very sensitive statement. It's a very sensitive topic or uh, aspect of discussion. But I really want you to please broaden that aspect of that, what you're saying. What is the importance? What comes first? When you're raising children and you think uh, you have an assignment. And you know, you know this, this kind of feeling that oh, I'm working for God. I'm working for God. How do we manage that aspect? How do we know that like, our, parenting, our parenting skills is not suffering? Our children is not suffering? And also the work that God has given into our hands that is not related. For me now, it's easy for me because I've been in children's development by the grace of God. So when I had kids, I was able to shed off some work. Before I, I, to the last moment I delivered, I was in the... Uh, uh, in the choir in our church. But at the moment that I gave birth, I said to the choir, I'm going to come back in after two weeks, after two years. But after two years, I realized <laughs> that I need to set priority rights because I had a lot of things I was doing at the same time. Which one comes first? It's not because I have singing ministry. I just, I, I just have that little gifting. So there, was, there were a lot of important work God has given to me that people would say, ah, they gave birth and they are not coming back. It's not like that. So I want you to please explain and expatiate on this point. How do we prioritize the assignment God has given to us? For me, they say it's easier because I just stayed at the back. No matter what, I cannot leave the kids at the back. The kids at the back are the priority for me. I don't mind. I don't even call me to the altar. It's fine. But for somebody whose assignment is not in children's department, you know, they have other assignment. They might be in ushering, choir, protocol and uh, they are back to church, and they want to start working immediately. What can you advise? How do they prioritize? How do they manage uh, positive parenting, godly parenting, and yet still be working for God? You know, praise, like I said, when the ministry started, I wasn't sitting with my husband in the front. I would go to the back because of my children. That's you know, just to tell you that, your, when you, yes, if you are in the church, if you are in the church that their children department is superb, is excellent, they can handle your kids for you. You are rest assured that that children is going to gain something sitting in that class. Good job. But if you are in a setup that you still need to support the children teachers as a mother, as a mother, so that the children you know, will be blessed. They will have something. You no know, children are restless. They can start moving around you know, the church and like that. But we as mothers, we are supposed to, in the setting of the church does not matter, we are supposed to sit down. If, if we can volunteer ourselves, are you getting me? That, okay, no, three mothers, please support these teachers today so that our children will be blessed. Your, chi your child is a priority. I'm telling you, your children is more important than that service you want to go and read. It is true, your service to God is very, very crucial. But why will you know, why will your child go to church? We just be roaming around the church, disturbing the church, the, no, not, not sitting down in the children's class, and you, you are required the department. No, you must, and again, you know, I'm wondering again is this. We should be able, as mothers, we should be able to know, instill some discipline in our children. I'm telling you, if that thing has been there, when the child goes to the church, even there may be one or two things, but the child will know that I need to sit down in this place today to listen, to be in children's class, to be in children's class. Like I was saying, I was sitting at the back so that I can, what's been said, I'll be able to, to tell my children, relate it to them in the little way at the back. 
but at home. My, my son, praise, knows how to read Bible at a very tender age. At a very tender age. Because what? We read it together. We read the Bible together. We pray together. Everyone speaking in tongues. At least we bless God. We appreciate God. They speak in tongues even more younger, more earlier than no. She will be sixteen, but he has been speaking in, speaking in tongues before sixteen. They gave their life to Christ before now, long time. Why? Because of the environments in the home. Because we are models to them. Children learn from their parents more than outside. What you do in the house, your parent, your children will do. A man of God said, "Where your your, your child knows that you have an altar that you go to to pray every time when you are not around." You see that child going to that altar to need that to pray as well. Whatever you do, your no children are what? They are learners. No, they are diligent to take from their parents. Before they take from anybody, unless they are not seeing you doing it, they take from people outside. But if you as a parent, you are doing it, you are not, you, they see you praying, not 10 minutes prayer, but I will thank you today, blah, 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 we also go. But they see their mother, they see their father in the place of prayer. For hours, oh my goodness, it will rub on the children. It will definitely rub on the children. And you consciously bringing them into God's presence. Not that you are praying, you left your children aside. <laughs> no, there are some prayers to pray with them. There are some prayers you do all by yourself. There are some prayers you must be, your children know are inclusive. You call them, we are praying today. We are praying today, we are fasting today, and they have to be involved. But there are some prayers you do personally. So when you are doing that thing as a mother, as a father, you are laying a very good legacy for your child. For your child. Let them be inclusive. In all time, can you pray for us? No matter if they can communicate, I want food. If they can communicate, come here, mommy, I want to drink water. If they have started communicating, when they are in the place of water praying, you just tell them, hey, can you pray for us? Any prayer they pray, God bless Amen. us. No, we we'll finish. Uh -huh. We we'll encourage them. From there, from there, they are building their strength in the place. No, in the place of prayer, they are building their confidence. Once you read Bible, no matter how the baby, the child will read it. If he can read, is no, is his book in school, his English book. Let the child take the Bible. Get a Bible that you know your child can read. Get it for not not only storybook. A lot of people invest so much in storybook and their child doesn't have a Bible. They don't have Bible to read. They don't have their own personal Bible. If your child has started reading, why will your child not have his own personal Bible? Uh -huh. They must have their own personal Bible. Yes, if they can start yes. reading storybooks, read it a textbook. They must have their own personal Bible. Their own personal So tell the child to read. So read for, he may not be able to know where Genesis is or whatever. Go to Genesis for that child. This is this. Can you read for us? That is how it starts. it starts. God bless you. God bless you, mommy. See, you're still going to talk more yeah. about this. See, if you know how excited I'm about, I am about today's topic, you know, it, I, I, I can't contain my joy because it's a very, very, this topic is very important to me. And I believe it should be important to every family, every Christian family. That's why I said at the beginning that this is not a regular parenting essentials. It is a special edition for believers. So don't be offended at what are they saying today. This is a special edition for believers, strictly for Christians, believers. And I'm so excited about what you're saying, mommy. You know, it's like a joy in my heart. I, I feel like jumping up right here and say, oh, hallelujah, praise God. And I, uh, this is a special edition. And before, even before we end this program today, I'm going to tell mommy to pray for all the children. You know, it's, a very, it's going to be a very great thing for me to tell her to pray for all our children. You know, you were saying a lot and you're still going to teach us more. You're talking about... Uh, engaging them, I, I have this attitude, you know, so I will read a question, I will say a few things, then I will let you go ahead, because I think the question is going in line. Somebody said, when, I, uh, when can I reintroduce Christ to my children? Isn't it too early to be telling a child of three or five about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you said something earlier, uh, yeah, you said, so, mommy, I'm going to give it over to you, I'll just read a few things, and I'll let you go ahead. That's a question. Somebody feels it's early, you know, the baby is three years, it's five years. Uh, do you know Jesus? Do you know Is this too early? Uh, and you said something that I want everybody to hold on to. Parenting must be intentional. 
you know and it's very important for every family every believer every believer of christ because it's not enough that you're going to church mm -hmm. Those who are Christians must be Christ-like. A lot of people call themselves Christians today, but they don't even know the meaning of Christian. You have to be Christ-like. And again, before we go also, I want us, uh, you are going to also talk about the importance of saying positive words in front of the children. And because I've seen a lot of people, you know, when you, when you are imputing, when you are imparting negative things in the life of your children, saying bad things in front of your children about people and telling your children, go and, go and mm -hmm. tell them I'm not at home. We are going to go to that area later. But now I want you to know that it is very important for you to consciously create a space, a spiritual space for your children. She kept saying yeah. altar, altar, altar. It is a must for you to raise an altar in your home. You have to raise an altar. Your atmosphere must carry power, must carry power. And there's something I've said in, this, uh, in other of my videos that are not spiritual about raising and about getting to know your children early before the age of one. That some people say it's not possible. That even from pregnancy, mommy, do you know that this issue of raising altar and raising godly children starts from when the baby is in the womb? The baby, we know yeah. that mommy and daddy are praying now. They're speaking in tongues. Yeah. By the grace of God, our uh, gift in our miracle baby, start, they started speaking in tongues early in life. Then I started, I wanted to know, mommy, I wanted to know that are they just copying our tongues? I realized four of us in the house doesn't have the same tongue. That was a sign for us. Our <laughs> tongues are not the same. I listen to them over again, and there's something about them. If any of them get new tongue, they tell me, praise the Lord, mommy, Holy Spirit gave me a new tongue today. And you can hear and hear the intensity of that new tongue with power. So that gave me courage. It's not that they're just copying. They are very little. But Holy Spirit actually is inspiring them. And even the two kids, their tongue is not the same. So everything is possible. It's about your consciousness. It's about letting... See, you're talking about Bible. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, our miracle babies, as of today, they have three, three different Bibles. At the beginning, we bought them the, uh, the regular small Bible, the beginner's Bible. They have two different ones. After a while, they told me they finished reading it. So I realized when I asked them to go and read their Bible, they, they were no more interested. I was saying, why? You have to read your Bible. Mommy, I have read from this Genesis to Revelation. And when we are talking about other stories in the Bible, they tell me, it's not in my Bible. Please buy other mm. Bible for me. So we have now, have, they have other adult two different Bibles, which are, they are happy about. So now they don't go into the student Bible again. They have other adult Bible. Even at the point, one of them was not able to read very well. But it doesn't matter. She will just sit there and just be. But at the end of the day, God has helped them so much. I am not, see, today I said to myself, I'm not going to use PMP as an example. But there is no way we can separate this thing. And don't forget, it's not about our children. It's about everybody. It's about everything is possible. If truly we call ourselves children of God, if truly we are said that our home is, is consecrated for God, so our children also must be consecrated for God. They have to be set apart. They are different. And you said something about telling your children you can't help them. You know, I say this to my children by the grace of God intentionally. In fact, I, I'm going to be posting some videos of all that I was saying. They were barely one year. I would tell them, mommy cannot help you. On purpose, intentionally, when they call me for some help, I will not answer them. I say, in this case, don't call me. I can't do nothing. Only Jesus can help you. Only Jesus can help you. So it's very good for us as parents to let our children know. Sometimes it's like, ah, oh, we are wicked. We are not wicked. We are letting them to have the personal relationship with God on time. Personal. You know, this, this relationship with God must not be, we are Christians. Mommy, also, I would like you to talk about, you know, like we were raised. A lot of us were raised in, uh, I was raised in Nigeria, Yoruba family, by the grace of God. My mom, she's a deaconess. My dad was an elder in church. By the grace of God, my dad was the one who taught me how to pray. However, we had a lot of issues together, especially with my dad. Personally with me growing up, because at the point we were not using earrings. Uh, I started using earrings for in my family. I put it on. And uh, me and my daddy, we would sit down and break the word. I'll tell him, daddy, sit. Let's break the word together. And that helped me because I had the personal relationship with God. And at the point, he realized this child, she, she understands what she's doing. So she, he, 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 he understood that my child is born again. He has a relationship with God. And they were able to let me do whatever I want to do. I remember the first day I came home with... Uh, with uh, wearing pants and everything. Uh, okay, I don't want to go there today, but I want you to talk a little bit about it. Because a lot of families, they are imposing doctrine on their children, not God. They are not raising godly children. But they kept telling, don't you know my post in the church? I'm a deacon in the church, you cannot do this. So there is each different. Mommy, can you please help us out in this aspect? 
A lot of parents will tell their children, I'm a deacon, I'm a pastor, you cannot do that. Is it because they are pastors or because their children must be born again and have personal relationship with God? Please help us talk more on that point, mommy. Yes, before I will talk on that, you know, somebody said that uh, my children, my child is just three years old. Can my child yes. know, know about you? No, your child, really, <laughs> if you can register your child in school at uh, three or oh, three, three, almost going to four, why did you put that child in school? You want that child to learn, uh, to have educational background, how to count one, two, three, how to say rhyme, how to do that. And you believe that that child going to that school, going to that school is going to learn. The same thing with you. You are intentional taking your child to school when the child is three years old. When the child is four years old, you didn't, you know, you didn't say this child is too small to go to school, to go and learn to go from kindergarten. The same thing. If your child is three years old, and by the grace of God has helped you, the child can communicate, the child can understand simple instruction. There are ways to break down these things to our kids. You don't get it. There are things I will break that. No children, they can be doing so many things, so so many funny things. You tell that child, you know, Jesus loves you. You're a child of God. A child of God don't do that to mommy. A child of God, a, a Jesus baby doesn't do that to daddy. You no, know, mm -hmm. you break it. Like that, like, you say, okay, Jesus, no, no. There are ways. Even in school, there are ways to pass knowledge to our kids. Even in school. The way they will teach a kindergarten will differ from a reception from primary, yes. no, a child in primary school. The same thing, the way you pass out the knowledge of God to your child, you must pray for that wisdom. If you get me, your child can know about Jesus as a very tender age. Like what we have been discussing, the environment you create in your home, the word that you are saying in your home, your child is just saying you every time Jesus, when you pray Jesus, you are in the kitchen, you are the song you are singing, Oh my goodness, you are ready, you are ready putting something into that child. I'm not saying, okay, maybe you, you decide, no, breaking, no, put your, your child's head and we say, no, carry the Bible, no. But there are some little, little ways in the way they behave. The question they ask you, what they do, that you chip in Jesus for them. You bring in Jesus for them, that Jesus loved them. You don't know, you don't, even if the child is sick now, if your child is sick, uh, you are praying for the child. It is Jesus that will heal you. It's not mommy and daddy. No, you pray. And I like the child that. is like that. saying amen. From that time, you will know. You will know that Jesus like can that. heal. Jesus can protect you. You understand? That's how we put just, Jesus mommy, in mommy, this mommy. into a children from tender age. I will just add a little from bit to that first aspect of prayer. After the prayers yeah. when they're sick, you know what? There's the one thing that we do in our house that it has become part and parcel of our children by the grace of God now. If they are having pains or they're sick now, before we pray for them. So now he has gotten to the point of asking them first, have you prayed about it? Have you prayed for Go yourself? and talk to yeah. God about it. Go and so we now we are now uh, there's a question from Mrs. Bumi Imori. I'm gonna read your question in a moment. Just give me some time. I've I've seen the question. I'm gonna read it out for mommy to tackle it. And uh, Daddy also said something that I would love to read. Uh, it's gone. Okay, Daddy said, uh, conscious effort is inevitable if you erase godly children. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's really good. So I was talking about now when we start praying for them, when we see that they are growing, then we now help them out to grow their faith. So now we ask them, have you prayed about it? I said, oh, no, let's go and pray about it. They will pray and they go, ah, mommy, I feel better now. So it, has, they, it, it helps them to grow <laughs> in faith. And I'll just, I will quickly cite a scenario that happened last week or last two weeks there, but something happened in our house last week. We were in the living room and accidentally, I saw what happened, it was an accident. One of the, one of our children kicked the TV accidentally. So then I realized that the TV went blank. It's ink, like it went, the ink, everything, then it stopped working. I was like, mm. I wanted to be upset, then I come, I just, I, I, I just, I cooled myself, I took a deep breath and I sat down. Oh, mommy, I'm sorry, the TV is broken. I said, wait, wait, wait. See, this TV must not be broken. We cannot buy any TV now. That is a devourer. Mm -hmm. It's a devourer. We mm -hmm. can buy a TV now. What are we advising mm -hmm. you now? Go back to that TV and declare the word. That TV must work. <laughs> she said, mommy, I'll be back if we work. I saw the two of them in front of the TV. They were speaking in tongues. I'm not kidding. This is a real life example. I was sweating. You know, in me, I don't have the faith they were using. I was like, mm. 
as much as I have said, I was like, the next play was inside me. And I, I was thinking in my head, if they come back to me and I on the mm. TV, yet it's not working, I will tell them to go back mm. and pray again. Mm. That's just like that. Mm. Mm. So I didn't call them. They were there praying. Both of them, they were they praying. It was mm. one that had the accident, but both of them, they, they joined their faith mm. together and they were praying. And they came to me at a point, about five minutes, they said, Mommy, on the TV, it's working. I said, how did you know? <laughs> They said, Mommy, on the TV, it's working. I said, okay. I took the remote and I on the TV. Then the TV worked. And I said, I, said, I told you it's working. Yeah. But yet, you know when I said, let me check. And I said, I told her, let me check every station if there is no problem. So I checked. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I now use that to also explain to them that so the same way you pray for TV and it came back to life, that is the mm. same way that you can pray I'm for the dead for and it will rise. Yeah. That is the same yeah. way we tell Edic, go away in the name of Jesus and it rise. Yeah. That is the way we tell yeah. the sick to rise up. I said, yes. And I said, back, go back to that TV and start to, Father, we thank you for this miracle. Yeah. So I'm just using this example. So I, sometimes I try as much as possible not to use this example. But they are just the truth and they are practical. And this is just for us to know that we can also raise our children. You know, I try, I said to myself today, I'm not going to use them as example. But I can't, I don't know how. But these are, these are good examples that I can use. It is very important. Yeah. When we teach them, yeah. then we help them to grow their faith. Mommy, there is a question here from Mrs. Bumi. I'll just go ahead and read the question. She said... What if you didn't start praying for them in the womb? Is it too late to pray and believe God for an encounter for, for children of 10 years? No. Above, as some says, what you did, what you didn't do before 10 can't work again. Please shed light. Okay, I'm going to let mommy shed light. But before I shed light, what if those who are giving their life to Christ at 50? Their life is going to be a brand new. What you don't know, that's why the Bible says, all things are passed away. We are new in Christ. If you had your children 10 years ago and you were not aware about those things, don't, this is just, you know, there are some things that are just normal. They are the way of life, standard way of life. But ours is different in Christ Jesus. Now you know better. Your child is 10 years. The Lord is going to renew your child. And the best way to teach a child at this point is to mirror, to model what you want to see. It must be intentional. So it must start from you modeling not imposing into that child at 10, but you model and you systematically with the wisdom of God, lead that child to Christ and build the faith of your child along with you. Mommy, please, can you shed more light on this question, please? Yeah, like the question. Please, you can drop your questions. Drop your questions. Yeah. We are going to be attending to it. Okay, go ahead, Mommy. Yeah, that question, if, if you didn't start praying for your child when the child is in the womb, it's never too late. At every point in time, you can start, you no, know, even God is happy. You realizing it now that, oh, I've made an error. That's what God is happy about. Okay, I didn't start this thing at the right time, but now that I'm, I know I'm aware that I need to do this for my child, you step into that shoe. Don't, no, don't feel bad. Don't condone. There should be no uh, self-condemnation. The best thing is that, okay, you realize it now, and it's coming to the sink. And I tell you, if you want to win a child at that time, love must be involved. Because, you know, mm. the child has grown. You no, know, there are some habits, there are some characters that you know some things that the child is now involving. It is true love. And the love must start from you and the father. You know, handling, you no, know, showing love to that child, being kind to that child. That child will see the reason, you know, to embrace Christ. Not a, a child that you want to win, you no, know, you want to impart God wisdom into, and that child is still seeing some negative things around the home. You no, know, you and the daddy, you shout at each other. Maybe you see lies. The child is seeing negative words. No, no, the child may not, no, may not submit. But when you see the love between you and your husband, the environment you create, the love in the home, you no, know, the kindness. No, you show in that home. It will be easier for because you because your child is watching you. Like we will be saying, when, you, when your child sees what is coming out of you, the virtue as a mother, you are concerned about the child, about his welfare. You no, know? it will be easy for you to send Jesus to that child. Love is the foundation. If you didn't start from the beginning and now you are rising, show love to that child. Show love to that child. And begin, you know, begin to... Tell the child, he won't impose at this time because the child is getting to, getting to know him, him, himself or herself. So with love, 
You can connect with this child. You can connect with this child. And through that, Christ, you no, know, will be passed across to the child. You don't have to be authoritarian. You don't, yes, have, to be authoritarian. You don't have to be authoritarian at this stage. No, you just have to like your child too, because he knows, he understands now. Maybe that child will be around primary seas or thereabout. So it is with love and understanding you pass across Christ to that child. And let that be love in that environment. Praise God. Let that be All love right, in that so environment. Much, All right, thank you so much on that. We are going to be rounding up. Today, I don't want us to keep, uh, I don't want us, I don't want us uh, keep us waiting today. I want to be time conscious. Mm -hmm. And I hope that has helped. I'll just say a few words about it. But please, if you still have questions, you can drop it. If you are not able to answer it today because of time, we are going to, I have a, lot, a whole lot of questions I'm supposed to have made a video about. I got, God's going to help me. And the truth is that I'm going to be bringing Mommy Pat back sooner, sooner, sooner. So please, every question that you might have about raising godly children, please, you can just keep them together because I don't want us to use, uh, to go out of time. We're supposed to use one hour. All right, okay. Uh, the aspect of uh, your child is 10, and uh, you, people are saying because they've grown now. And so I want you to know that everything now, just, you know, at this point, forget about that child. Concentrate on yourself. If you want to teach your child or change your child or teach your child the spiritual things, there must be a lot of things that you have to change about yourself also. Sometimes we don't take time to reflect and think about our life. Your child will know that mommy is different. There will be something that you need to change about your life. You have to reflect so that you can be able to mirror, to model exact thing that you want to see in the life of your child. And most of the time, there is this aspect of life that we don't see that is important. In the aspect of husband and wife, they are not in good agreement. Maybe one just gave life to Jesus. Maybe one is not a born again yet. But your, 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 your attitude is not different than the way went before you gave life, your life to Jesus to your husband because he's not born again. He's not going to help your child. You have to renew everything at this point. You are born again. The husband is not born again. But you want to raise a godly child. It's very important. It's very sensitive. So you have to let the Holy Spirit guide you. The Holy Spirit, you know, there's those things that you cannot hold before. Those things that you cannot withstand before. By the help of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to withstand. Okay, honey. Maybe the child has not even heard from you to call the daddy or Neil, uh, sweetie, in, in, in a long time. <laughs> the child begins to see that there's something different about my mommy. Your life will not just show to your child, but we also show to the husband at the point, ah, hey, this born again is working for this, my wife. Oh. I'm just saying this on a general mm -hmm. note. For anyone who must be in this situation, maybe you are born again, your husband is not born again, or the husband is born again, the wife is not born again. Your light must shine forth. You cannot preach by mouth to your, your spouse. Don't forget, you both were unbelievers before you started that journey. By the grace of God, one of you is now born again. This just came to my spirit, and I feel I should drop it. Not your preaching that will change your spouse. It is your attitude. Well, it is you showing for the light of God. Don't forget, the Bible says we are the light of the world. We are the salt. You are going to season the home with your attitude and character that your spouse will say, uh-uh, this Jesus is the sweet. I'll go join this, 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 this was a sweet. Your action will speak louder than your voice. Your children begin to see, ah, smarty mommy will cuss us before. Smarty, she will shout. Now she's, she's teaching, she's correcting us in love. She's yeah. showing empathy. Yeah. With, you know, with your, they will come and, ah, mommy, is there, are you okay? At first they will be asking you, are you okay? Later they will know you are not joking <laughs> about it. That is when your light is showing forth. Your light is showing forth. That is when the sword that the Lord has given to you is seasoning the home. Please let us know this is very important. Thank you for joining me. He know this. Please, if I mother the name, uh, sorry, God bless you for joining. God bless you for joining. So I hope we don't have any other question more for now. I'm just going to tell mommy to just run up everything we've said for us today. And uh, don't forget, it must be intentional. Raising godly children is required is saturating, saturating your kids with the scripture. It requires saturating your kids with the Bible, with the word of God, the word of God. Let them know that they are not reading the Bible because you are there. See, this is the mistake that a lot of parents did in the past. Growing up, I saw this over and again, even not in my middle family, but I saw it around me. The kids know that their daddy and mommy are coming. Okay, they want to see us read the Bible. They will not go and pretend. Let them have the personal relationship with God.
Let them know. They are not reading the Bible for you as parents. They are not going to have a relationship with God because you are a deacon or you are a pastor. But because it's important for them to build their relationship with God. It is a personal race. You can't help them. Even if they are with you now for primary section, middle school and everything, at the point they are going to leave you. What are they going to leave it? They can only live with that seed, the great seed, the word of God, the strength that you have given them. That is what is going to go away with them. And that is why it's very important for every parent to ensure that every of your child is having a personal relationship with God early in life. It's very important. Please let us know that. Very, very important. Sometimes I feel guilty when I look at the time as it's 2 a.m. and I can see my children awake. We are still praying in the house. Sometimes I feel, am I not overdoing this? So anytime I see it's getting late and I say, go and sleep. Don't worry. We pray a bit. Then we go. Daddy and mommy will do it. No, they say, no, we cannot sleep. We cannot sleep. No, no, no. Sometimes we tell them, go and say, no, we have not prayed. I say, but we prayed a little bit late the other time. No, 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 no. We've not done the prayers. So we have to let them. I know. And sometimes when you are, when you are tired, you feel like, oh, today you're tired. They now become the police in the house. They remind you, yes. Yes, they now become the police. When you get to the point, yes. When you get to the point that your children <laughs> is now reminding you of what you are teaching them, then you can pat yourself at the back and say, Jesus, I thank you for the strength. You know that you have done well by the grace of God. By the grace of God. So it's very important for us to be conscious about this. This is a very sensitive topic, I know. But it's very important for us. As the Holy Spirit led this in my heart, I said, Holy Spirit, what? How do I go about this? But thank God for Jesus, thank God for the Holy Spirit who gave me the right person also to call on this topic. And I believe you've been blessed greatly today. Mommy, please just round up if there's one or two words that you want to drop before we finish this broadcast today. We'll be glad to hear you again. Yeah, what I just want to say is that, you know, God gave us these children. And God knows that we are able by His grace. You know, God gave them to us. And we should have it in mind that will be accountable for them. You know, we'll be accountable for our children. We should not, we, we, we are, you know, we should have the mind, the heart to raise children that Pastor God David, will be thank proud you for joining, sir. I can see you right there, Pastor David. God bless you, sir. That God will be proud of, you'll be proud of, and the society will be proud of. Like what we have been saying, it is our relationship with God that will rub off on our children if we want to have a godly home or godly children. If you don't have any relationship at all, why, why do you raise your child? How? You'll be raising them outside God's will. Because you yourself, you don't know how to go about it. You don't know, so you'll be imparting the wrong thing into them. Like a prayer will say, if they hit you, hit them back. If somebody slap you, slap them back. Slap them if back. If they talk to you, you talk, they talk back to them. Because that's Mommy, what you Mom know. Mommy, do you know a lot of parents are proud about this? A lot of parents are really proud about this. Ah, my child, get back his slap. If they hit you, hit them, if they talk to you, talk back to them. No, it's not like that. So we should not, we should help us to help us to mold our children. We should not mar their destiny because we are going to give accounts. It's not about you alone, about God that gave those children to you. We are going to give account on how we raise them, on how we raise them. Is it spiritually, physically, emotionally, in any, any aspect, we are going to give account. Don't be too busy not to have time for your child. Don't be too busy to have time for your child. You must create that time, no matter, even though you are tired. Create that time, make sure this time, this time, you know, children like to work on routine. They like to work on routine. Get a routine in your home that at this time, this is when we are coming together as a family, that we are doing this thing, we are having fellowship together. Let it be a routine in your home. If you start doing most of this thing, we'll say, I, I, I trust God. There will be changes in our homes. We, we raise up children that fear God, that love God, that want to serve God. Even you yourself, you know, you'll be proud of yourself as a mother and as a child. You'll be proud of yourself. You can know, you can know that when your child is outside, it's not going to bring shame to you because you have done your own work. By the grace of God at home, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much, Mommy. Mr. Olu, I can see you right there, sir. Thank you for joining, sir. God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for joining this broadcast, everyone. And thank you so much for coming, Mommy Pat Oluro Timi. I believe everyone has been blessed on this special edition of Parenting Essentials that says, 
raising godly children. And I want to say a big thank you to Mommy Pat Oluro Timmy from all of us from the Vision Guide. I say a big thank you to Daddy Pat for, for Daddy Oluro Timmy for agreeing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, people call my husband, uh, <laughs> you, you can call each other's name. Mommy, we are one, right? It's okay, it's a good mistake. Very lovely mistake. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daddy, for agreeing for Mommy to come on this, uh, on this uh, platform. Thank you so much. And I believe when I call on you again, Daddy will not say no. And the entire team, the entire team, the praise and grace team okay. will say yes. Thank you so much for joining, Mommy. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has joined, even though I can't see everyone. Damilola Oyekola. Damilola Ni Oyekola, if you are there, you can say hello. I didn't see you on this live broadcast. I didn't see you on there, Mrs. Aduro Bola. I didn't see you on this live broadcast. If you are there, you can just say hello. I can't see you right here. Esther, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Diki No More, Pastor Rachel, thank you for staying right there. Mrs. Quaker, thank you so much for joining. Diki Prakash, Mr. Oluko, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bumi, thank you for joining. Uh, Mr. Oyebamiji, Emmanuel, thank you for joining. I can't see everyone. Pastor Daniel, Pastor David, if you are still there, thank you so much for that. My brother is right there. Uh, Uncle Dave, as I, as I fondly call you, thank you so much for standing by. Thank you for being there. Uh, that is right there. And then uh, I tried to call that name the other time. Inno Tips, I, sorry for murdering you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Elizabeth Amoussan. Oh, is that my auntie? I guess. Thank you for joining, Ma. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I can't see everybody. I can't see everybody, but I know you are there. Uh, Mr. Matthew Akibumi, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Mrs. Rose Beverly Malambana, please pardon me. Thank you for joining. Yemara Malij, thank you so much for joining, everybody. Brother Power, thank you for joining. You're right there. Thank you so much, everybody. Miss Remy, thank you for joining. Uh, Mr. Pasca, Mrs. Pasca, thank you for joining everyone. I can't see everybody right now. Uh, Sister Delali, thank you for joining from Texas. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you for always turning up anytime this little girl right here call. Thank you, and I believe it has not been a wasted time. Because personally, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. When I said at the beginning that I don't just choose mama, I choose them with wisdom. You will agree with me. And I believe we've been able to, we'll be able to have her again soon, I believe, by God's grace. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Johnson, thank you so much for joining. Mrs. Blessing Johnson, thank you so much. Wambua Nganga, thank you so much for joining everyone. I can't see everybody right now. But I said thank you and thank you, Mrs. Lolo, uh, Dickness Lolo. Thank you very much. God bless you. You see, I just like I said the last time, I feel like coming to your houses and giving you a hug. Bro, from all of us from the Vision Guide, this is a sweet hug for you all. And I blow kisses to you and I said, God bless you. Thank you so much, Mommy, for joining. Thank you and thank you for your time. God bless you. Bye for now, everybody. God bless you. Bye.